Okay guys, so shout out to my school community. This thing is absolutely crazy. Like I teach people, people teach me, people ask for help, people give really, really interesting links and someone has just posted this link right here. Now this is client rules library from the client team. Hey everyone, this is from the client team, the official client team, which is amazing. We've put together an open source client rules repo, a collection of community driven prompt files for client. I've kicked things off by adding a few favorites. I'd encourage you to explore the repo, contribute any client rules, you found useful, blah, blah, blah. Here is the repo, right? So before we get into what the repo is, first of all, if you wanna join the school, first link in the description of the video, definitely recommend it. It's great, there's lots of like-minded people who are just trying to learn, and we're all just kind of helping each other. Every Wednesday we have a meeting. It's going really well, guys, and I would encourage you to join. Anyway, what this basically is, is predefined templates that are ready to go, right? skip errors by iterative prompting, but not just iterative prompting, right? The second part of iterative prompting, the reason that we're doing iterative, I gotta stop saying that word, prompting, is because AI makes, AI makes the same errors. Every AI makes the same errors. I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of AI models are pretty much exactly the same with how they think. It's just they have different levels of intelligence and um, cost and speed and stuff like that but generally speaking like if you ask an ai to give you a font for a luxury rolls royce website and trust me i know this because i've made millions of them now it will always use it doesn't matter which ai model you pick it will use uh i think it's called playwright uh, i can't remember the exact playfair i think it's called actually it's it's a font right it will always choose this font it doesn't matter if you're using gemini chat gpt claude it doesn't matter right something about the way that ai and it's probably because they're all llms or probably because they were all trained on the same data set but something about the question evokes this response in every ai right and in that same vein ai also makes the same errors right so you've probably seen the shad cn one that i was talking about a couple of videos ago basically the current command is um, something like npx create npx create at shad cn latest right this is the actual correct command but again even if you use context 7 even if you use gemini or whatever doesn't matter which model you use because of the way they're trained on probably internet data they will always use the incorrect um the incorrect command right which is npx create shad ui at latest in fact if you go on google today and this is a really good demonstration of what i'm talking about um let's just say what is so look shad you refer to the most recent version of shad cn blah 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 the at latest tag when i did this yesterday basically it said that this command here was how to start a shad cn project but it's not this is depreciated or de whatever depreciated i'm pretty sure it's the correct word but um and this is actually the current version right shad cn at latest so even google's ai just doesn't get this at all so it's super super interesting to look at this so let's get back to client rules before i talk about nothing for the entire video so Basically, what I found on here, and this is a really, really cool uh, system, you can click on client rules, right? And there's some pretty cool ones, like um, this is like the architecture of everything. This is how client works, I guess. Client for research, client for slides, so for making slides, blah, blah, blah. Gemini Comprehensive Software Engineering Guide, that's pretty interesting. Now, the one that I find the most in the most interesting is this one right here, Next.js Superbase Auth. If you have ever tried to set this up, right, which I have a million times, it will get it wrong every single time. It doesn't matter if you use Context 7 to um, give it up-to-date documentation. It doesn't matter. It will code it incorrectly because something about the way that you prompt what you want something goes wrong right i'm not exactly sure what it is it, what it's this so never generate this code it will break the application I'm, I'm pretty sure that this happens every single time i try and code a next.js application 
if we can find all of these kind of errors, and obviously people have had the same experience as me because it's never worked for me first time. Like it always gets messed up. There's always a problem. It looks like this would actually help you implement this very, very easily and very, very quickly. So what you could do is you could introduce these client rules into anything, really. It doesn't have to be for client, right? So if I press copy here, just to show you an example, right? Let's open a notepad, put it here. Let's copy it again so that we have it. Let's go to the Claude desktop app, right? New chat, doesn't have to be client, like I said. Like you can do a new project here. You can call this um, SAS with Next.js auth. Um, Superbase docs or something, right? And then you can give it a description if you're not like me and you like to keep things nice and organized. And then we can actually add this as text content, right? We paste this and we call this um, next auth. What actually is this? Next.js app with Superbase super auth. Um, documentation. No. Um, Uh, implementation guide right and then you can do something if you want like you can put this in um, tags right or if you want to be really smart you can put it like this uh, so you can do next JS implementation guide again you can just do this with client as well I'm just showing you that it doesn't have to be done with client but client especially does have big problems with um, Next.js, Superbase auth, but so does Claude Desktop app, actually. So we'll add that content, right? And then we'll say, like, let's just grab one of my SAS prompts. So I've given this, I've, I've given the, um, the entire prompt, but what I'm just going to do is I'm going to say, please just for now start the project and implement um, Next.js with Superbase auth. Use use desktop commander to make a random file name with numbers on the end and then use was it next next js implementation guide to um, add super base o auth also give me a .m file where i can put my super base credentials Okay, so we should just be able to send that. This is quite a complicated prompt, but what I'm planning on doing is just skipping most of the, the building part. Okay. Oh wait, no, sorry, the prompt, um, the prompt has something in here that says use. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just quickly make the directory just because it will make things easier. Uh, where was that folder? So all I'm doing here, just so you know, that I'm not doing anything like to cheat or anything on this uh, experiment. I'm just deleting everything that's inside example 7, because that's in my prompt here, it probably says use example 7. Yeah, here, example 7. So, and then I'm just going to make a new Next.js project. So I just need the command to make a new Next.js project, because I'm a noob and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Give me the command to make a Next.js project with so we'll copy this. We'll just put a dot here. What? Oh, I need to see the uh, example seven. Okay, so I actually think these install settings are super important and I feel like I keep messing things up because I don't give it this. Here's my install settings. So actually this video has just become even more interesting because all of these other examples all had issues with what I'm trying to just show you guys how we shouldn't have issues this time. So let's see. Okay, so npm install, okay. Good, so in installed that, perfect. Okay, well, we'll see how this goes. So let me explain before we see the results why this could be so huge, right? If you know what a boilerplate is, 
okay? The cool thing about a boilerplate, and I'm gonna tell you why it's good, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why it sucks, okay? The cool thing about a boilerplate is you can start a project in five minutes, right? And you can start coding, etc. Now, I'm gonna tell you why it sucks for us vibe coders, whatever the hell you wanna call yourself. It sucks for us because AI tools are not that good at coming into like a massive, you know, 50 plus important page code or 1000 line long um, GitHub repo, right? What they're good at is building on top of a blank Next.js installation, right? So imagine if we can get the kind of experience of a boilerplate, which is easy installation by just grabbing client rules as they come out with them, right? So that instead of, you know, hoping the OAuth will work this time and hoping that Stripe will work this time, etc. Every time I unpause the recording, like some kid just screams, man, Jesus. What it what it'll do is it'll collect these predefined blocks, right? It's a little bit like um there's this thing called little pieces AI or something. Anyway, or like lovable integrations, right? Probably all lovable integrations are is is this, to be honest with you. This goes a little bit beyond context seven because even if you use context seven or give the context to the AI, it still is up to its interpretation and its training, whether it follows this or whether it follows what's in its brain. And to be honest with you, it often seems like it goes with what's in its brain, right? So imagine if we could build mini, like, like OAuth, right? All you would need for me anyway is Superbase because it has huge problems with Superbase, OAuth, which is covered by Superbase, and Stripe, right? This like, if you can master this stack or if you can find a way to get AI to master this stack, you can build literally anything. That's kind of crazy to be honest with you. So let's see if this worked, right? Let's go on Visual Studio Code here. Um, let's go to .m.local. So it's asked me for my Superbase Anon key. So we'll just grab that quickly. Okay, so I've added it. Let's just see if it's actually finished. Here's what we've set up, okay. Um, I don't really know what the hell it's done here, but okay. So we'll do npm install, npm run dev. Got five things running already. That is crazy. Okay, continue. Let's see if this just works first time. This would probably be the first time ever that that's happened. Okay, I mean, it worked, but there are some errors here. But I did get logged in. So it says welcome back. The reason for that is most likely because I already have an account um, here. If I go to table editor and and then users, I can't seem to find it, but let's just try on um, a different email. Yeah, I also have an account here too. Okay, so we've had a little sign up button here, so we should be able to test this properly now. Okay, so you can see this is actually working. I'm getting logged in now. If I added this SQL to the database and ran it, then it would definitely work. So, I mean, this could be the answer, guys. We, it just might be the case of building individual pieces like this, find out what's always going wrong, and or just wait for people who are more intelligent than us to fill the gap for us on this, uh, this GitHub, basically. I really hope they had Stripe. If they add Stripe to this, then, I mean, that would be amazing. I'll leave the video there, guys. This is a pretty cool little um, little thing that they're adding, for sure. I'll test this out with Klein as well, definitely. So it looks like all you need to do is uh, fork this repository. You're probably not going to do that. Create a new markdown file.md for your rule inside the Klein rules. Klein rules. Oh, right. Sorry, this is to, um, this is just to add, a, this is to contribute. Oh, right, okay, you just add it into your project's root directory, right? So if you're making a new project, let's just find a random Rolls-Royce project of which there are many, 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 many here. And then I believe all you would do here is make a dot uh, client rules file. 
paste the client rules and then save it. And then we could say like, I guess um, we could say, use the client rules to add a lot to my project. Okay, yeah, nice. It did actually uh, read the client rules. That's perfect. That's pretty cool. I like this system. I like this system. This is pretty interesting. Fair play to client. Uh, I'm going to be testing this out in a little bit more detail for building. Um, what I'm trying to look at at the moment is can I make like 12 SASs a month or whatever, like micro SASs. I just think it's a good way to make money. Honestly, I think SAS is probably the way to go and this definitely helps. I'll probably have a look at doing some kind of client rules for Stripe as well, uh, trying to avoid common problems if uh, no one else is going to do it. Okay, guys, I'll leave the video there. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, as usual, you're an absolute legend. And it is actually adding uh, OAuth to my current project, which is pretty awesome. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. I probably just already said that. Peace out.